This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. Quite a long time ago, we made a series around the world about endangered species and showed how the clock was ticking faster and faster. And how some people were trying to turn losers into winners. Of the threatened subjects was one that might seem safe. It's one of the most formidable eagles in the world. It lives in Africa, an icon of the forests, the crowned eagle. Back in 1993, we filmed an extraordinary saga involving a pair. We'll update the story and use it to explain how Kenya's forests are changing and how one man, Simon Tomsit, took great risks with this formidable king of the forest the crowned eagle. The forest in Africa can be a dangerous place. Colobus monkeys are always at risk. especially when one of them descends. Crowned eagle must kill to live, and in doing so reminds the forest of his place of power. It's not exactly the kind of bird you'd expect to have around the house. Simon Thompson's not talking budgies here. Next door to his bathroom in the bush are two extraordinary neighbors, a pair of crowned eagles, and they've got two eggs, a very rare event in captivity. Simon's life is about birds of prey. Near Nairobi in Kenya, he tries to help them, both at his home and in the wild. With the rare and spectacular crowned eagle, he's managing a remarkable double act. Here in the forest on the edge of town, he's built a tall hide. provides a special view for local Africans, school children, and eagle biologists. It's unique in Africa, a bird's eye view of a very dangerous and endangered bird. Rather surprisingly, the target has stayed there, and so now the two of them can watch each other at eye level across the treetops. This pair of eagles will turn out to be a big influence in Simon's life over the coming months. And it's not just Simon who'll be affected. Hyrax could be on the menu. Or squirrels. And he seems to know it. Even antelope must always keep alert. They never know who's watching.
The eagle has other hunters to contend with. This is another predator, placing a snare made from sharp porcupine quills, which will spring shut on the foot of the prey. A little Sunni antelope is a possible victim. The eagle may catch him too. or a Sykes monkey, eye contact. of our pair of eagles and the monkeys, squirrels, antelopes and the rest of the community in this island of forest just 10 miles from Nairobi city center. And its location brings problems, like a quarry that's eating the heart out of the forest. But some of the forest is protected. The eagle can see her nest tree and the nearby hide. At least that is a safe place she can return to, under the watchful eyes of Simon and his team. And they're all watching each other. As long as the building developments keep their distance, be they small Africans' houses or big new colonial-style mansions, the eagles may be able to cope. But to protect them, Simon must know what they'll tolerate and how they live. It so happens that this place is about the best possible for the understanding of a pair of crowned eagles. This rather older house used to be the home of Leslie Brown. A pair of crowned eagles nested at the bottom of his garden for many years, and Leslie, a world expert on eagles, carried out the most detailed study of the species, its prey, and its habitat ever undertaken. Part of the traditional hunting ground is still there, but from the eagles' point of view, the attitude of the neighbors has changed. As the amount of forest and the wild food it supports declines, so does temptation increase. Captain Duncan's geese, indeed his dog, are too close for comfort, and he has clear views about eagles and their nest now at the bottom of his garden. And they're trying to improve that nest. It's a nice spot for a walk. Crowned eagle may be one of the most aggressive hunters in Africa, but it needs quiet and privacy at times. Here along the edge of its home, it's getting close to the limits of change and disturbance. Its nest is now at risk, but even so, now and then, one of them manages to bring in a stick. Now this is really bad news, a damaged eye. Thank you. 
an auger buzzard tries the bait. As usual, they all watch each other, particularly the two eagles. She's in for a series of shocks that will change her life. Simon. An X-ray. The problem. A hood to keep her calm in the dark. No one knows if the operation will work. It's a world first at the local eye hospital. The jab. They think the injury was due to hitting a branch or even an antelope's pointed horn. Over the familiar gardens, both rich and poor, to the tree and the hide in the distance. But though that individual eagle may well recover, the future for the pair and their descendants is in the balance. Ever since Leslie Brown's classic study, the eagles here have become increasingly hemmed in. If it's not an expanding quarry, it's more buildings or more greenhouses to grow more flowers for export to Europe. In a small way, it's our demand for a rose at the right price that pushes back the forest and threatens the eagles. Lifestyles, be they like Karen Blixen's out of Africa, which used to be just near here, 
or more at the African end, they'll certainly have an impact on our wild eagles. It could be enlarging the garden, protecting the geese, or cutting wood from the forest. And now Simon's captive eagles come into this story. At his aviary, there's been an important development with the pair that he has had to take into captivity because of injury and the fears of local people. One chick has successfully hatched. A parent decorates the nest with greenery as it would in the wild. Simon provides that, and of course the right food that will be delicately passed on to the new arrival. It's a great achievement for Simon, who rescued the parents in the past, and, of course, for the birds themselves as successful breeders. Back at the wild nest, the question is, will the female now breed successfully? The pair seem to be well adjusted and at home. Life in the treetops has settled down in a season of plenty as flowers and insects proliferate. It's a time of birth and preparation for the future. But these matings seem to be in vain. Simon will have to try and solve the problem back at his aviary. The chick is much bigger now, and the parents will defend it fiercely. They're armed with big, powerful talons.
he's on his way to another nest, and maybe to another life, where he'll be reared by wild parents, the ideal way to grow up. But it's sad for the pair he leaves behind. So the other pair, still eggless, are in for a big shock. In fact, so is the whole community. Simon's put a line up, followed by a bag with a major surprise in it. He has evidence that wild eagles in the right mood would accept a chick in their nest, but it's a gamble and he must take some precautions. One wonders who is the most surprised. He's on his own with only a lightweight cage for protection. They're certainly intrigued. He's back again, with only a branch for protection. She could easily damage him badly, which would be odd thanks for trying to save her eyesight. But the chick must be fed. Hopefully the adults will take over. And then the big test without the cage. Adopt or attack.
near disaster. He's back yet again for the last time. The chick will be returned to the aviary and reared there safely. But it will have to be released gradually into the wild. Its parents never can be. It may not survive on its own out there, but at least there's one more crowned eagle growing up to add to the population of this rare African bird of prey. It's not just the individuals that are having a difficult time. It's a whole species. As forests are fragmented, and whittled away by what we do and how we live. The king of the forest is slowly losing his kingdom. It will need a big effort to stop it. That was 1993, and the question is, is the crowned eagle safer or not? It literally depends on the forest, and millions of Kenya people depend on the forest too, for water. These high, wet mountains are called water towers. So apart from the wildlife, like the crowned eagle, they are crucial to the whole country of Kenya. These days, Kenyans have got the message and are passing it on. Here is a human ecosystem, and simple, clear, and relevant to the locals. So don't cut, plant and protect. It's a national effort trying to repair the damage done to the forests in the past. But with an ever-increasing human population, Kenya's forests will become more and more important. That's good news for the crowned eagles. Planting exotics like pine and eucalyptus, which are fast-growing, takes the pressure off the slower-growing indigenous native trees. But with the number of people growing so fast, can they wait long enough to bring back the water towers to their full potential? The eagle's survival may depend on it and the buffalo down there. How much will his kingdom change into the future? And here's a clue. In the Aberdares Mountains, there's an unnatural straight line. It's a fence, 400 kilometers long, built over some 20 years. It surrounds the whole water tower, keeping dangerous buffalo and elephants in and people out. It protects crops from raiding elephants and reduces illegal logging and it seems to work. And so do the workers. What a job over extreme terrain. Colin Church, originally behind it all, explains. Having completed the, the Aberdare fence, um, which has been a 22-year marathon because all the money has been raised uh, by, um, by donations, by citizens of Kenya and friends of Kenya abroad, um, we are beginning to get great interest and support from the Kenya government. Um, they, they assisted us financially as we completed the fence. And now the plan is to fence other large forested areas. So that's good news for Kenya and its people, its crowned eagles and all its wildlife. And of course for Simon Thompson who tried so hard to turn a loser into a winner. The chick will be returned to the aviary and reared there safely. But it will have to be released gradually into the wild. Its parents never can be. Mm -hmm.